Hey everyone, it's me again. My name is Nan Pham. I'm a yoga instructor based out of San Francisco. And today's yoga topic is how do you get feedback every day on how you're doing at life? So my channel is, yes, it's more about yoga philosophy because I feel like um, most of it of the yoga is not so much the physical. Yeah, you need to do some physical yoga or any type of exercise to maintain health. But I think the most important part of the yoga practice is how you live your life. So my channel more focuses on that. And also, um, I'm not the type of yoga teacher that uh, is super strict, um, nor do I feel like you have to follow everything to a strict tea to get any type of positive results. Um, everything that you practice will be a little different for each person. So maybe one person does need to go to ashram and then do maybe do like a 10 day silent meditation. But this is more for somebody who isn't as strict but wants to live a more positive life. Um, so I guess let me start with the topic. Okay, so um, the way I view getting feedback on how you're doing in general in life is that the whole world is your mirror. Okay, so every interaction that you have with people, every project feedback you get is an indication on how well you're doing. Okay, even money. Okay, so for an example, Maybe one day you feel off and your energy is kind of low, right? So just, um, I don't work in corporate America anymore, but when I did, whenever you would interact with some people at work, they always have this like busy, I have so much work, I don't have time to talk to you. Um, and that energy, you don't even have to ask them you know, how they're feeling. It's just an energy that they have. And so my point being is whenever maybe you have a negative energy or just kind of a low energy um, day, the way you interact with people, the feedback is exactly how, um, it's like the mirror of how you're doing, okay? Or how you're coming across. So maybe you are tired or maybe you're disappointed or upset about something in your personal life and say you go to work um, and you interact with other people, they may ask, oh, is everything okay? How you look concerned? And those are indications that people are mirroring back to you exactly who you are, okay? So whenever the interaction you have with other people, it's an indication if you're doing positive or you're not doing so well. Another um, example is when someone is um, confident and they're doing great in whatever um, talent that they have or job or just in their relationships, their interaction with you are, is very calm, they're kind, they feel free to compliment you. And when you're in the presence of those type of people, your vibration instantly up levels. Okay, so when I say, when I use yoga philosophy and how you're doing um, in general in life, what I mean is really all the thoughts in your head um, is, is something that you need to work on controlling, okay, controlling and also investigating um, what is it, the feedback that you're getting from the interaction with the outside world, okay? And, okay, another thing is that everyone is your teacher, okay? Everyone is your teacher. So whenever you interact with somebody, it uh, could be your relationship, especially relationships. I think relationships are your biggest teacher because you get to know someone who has completely different history of you and uh, you're learning how to interact with them in a positive way. Um, in a loving way. Um, and so I find relationships are your biggest teacher. Whenever you are triggered, okay, or if something ignites a fire in you, 
that is an area that you need to work on controlling the mind in that area or really investigating why do I think that thing? Is it faulty programming or is this actually true, right? So one of those things would be blanket comments, okay? Like all men suck, okay? Those are things that people, blanket comments such, like, such as that, people use it as a crutch to not think harder, okay? Or not do the investigation of their thoughts in their head, okay? Oh, and even, even money is a feedback on how your thoughts are. If you need to do better thinking around money, around abundance. And I'll speak to those of you who maybe you're an aspiring yoga teacher. One of the things I, you know, we all live in this world. We all have to survive. And unfortunately, in order to survive, you need money or something that you can trade in order to live, right? I personally think every yoga teacher, whether you're new, you're old, whether whatever it is, if you're offering a service, you need to charge for it, okay? You need to do some type of trade because it's an energy exchange. So if you give it away for free, okay, maybe you send the message to everyone else that yoga all the studying that you did, all the effort and hard work you did is not worth anything, right? So um, maybe it's an indication of maybe you need to build your confidence in order to ask for what you are valued at, okay? And also um, money is also a reflection on maybe you think in a scarcity mindset. Okay, maybe you think that everything needs to be difficult in order for me to receive the energy of money. And that is a way where you need to practice your yoga. You need to ask yourself, are these thoughts true? Can I control my mind to activate in a way that is up-leveling me and gives me more positive ways of getting the thing that I truly desire? Okay, and, that, and this is another part that kind of I'm a little different than other yoga teachers. You can desire material things. I think that is perfectly fine. Okay, what, and it only becomes not okay if it starts to control your life and that you no longer live in your highest self. You start to live in a, um, maybe you're controlled by the thing that you desire. I think that's where the yoga kind of gets off. But if you... If you do desire something, I think that's perfectly fine. Whether it be a material thing, a some type of relationship, I think all of those are fine. Um, and so in order to control your mind or get feedback or have more positive um, thoughts that bring you to where you want to be, the other part of yoga in, in the Nan, Nan, Nan's interpretation of the philosophy is to take care of yourself, okay? To take care of yourself. So when you feed yourself a nutritional meal, a healthy meal, you are taking care of yourself and you get the feedback of if you're doing good in life by how you show up, okay? So I don't know, I know a lot of people like fried chicken. I do too. <laughs> this is a weird example. But like once you eat fried chicken, I th like I, the, the feedback I get is that my body feels really tired and lethargic and, and then maybe it actually instigates an addiction and you want more, right? So that is a feedback if you're doing okay or if you're making the right choices in your life okay your body will tell you okay if you're not taking care of your body you're not sleeping it'll show up in your skin okay if you're eating terribly or you're stressed maybe your skin is inflamed or you get pimples things like that okay those are the feedbacks that you get just from life and and doing your yoga practice okay and then the other part is um, about the feedback if you're doing okay in life is say you do desire a healthy relationship so this is one of the things that I had trouble or this is a missing piece that I couldn't figure out 
but then I got it later. Um, so whatever you desire, whether it be a relationship, a customer, um, a relationship with your family member, a job, the question you need to ask, okay, and then you also think in your mind, what is it that I need to be to attract that thing? Okay, so it, that kind of sounds esoteric. I, I probably heard that like a million times before I actually got it. But um, one of the ways that I was able to get the message was if you want a healthy relationship, okay, if the man is healthy mentally, okay, they're not abusive, they have no addictions, what would that guy want out of me? They probably want me to be confident, healthy mentally for, for me to get him and him to want me, right? Or a job. Um, so say you want to be a CEO of a company or you want to make your own company. What are the qualities that you need to embody to get that thing, okay? If so happened you keep getting bad jobs or um, you keep attracting bad relationships, you have to practice your yoga, turn inward and see and ask yourself, what are the qualities in me that attract this person? Maybe I also am not confident. Maybe I have an addiction problem. Maybe I need some validation from the other person and which makes me have a terrible relationship. Or maybe I don't have confidence in the skills and I keep applying to like terrible jobs, okay? Or I just um, too afraid to work on the skills that I need to get that job because what if I don't get that job? So that is a feedback that the world gives you to see if you're on track to the thing that you want. And little asterisk here, not everybody wants the same thing. So if whatever you want, you're going to have to do that introspection, your yoga, to figure out what is a quality that I need to embody or develop to get those things. So that was really hard for me or not even hard, it was just a missing piece that I didn't know. I would always want all these desires, but I had no idea how to get them, or I, I, my mindset was not to that one missing piece, which is what are the qualities that I have to embody to get the thing. Okay, and one, one little thing that I wrote in my notes is when you don't, um, when you don't take a minute to understand your thought process or your habitual limiting beliefs, you continue to live your life asleep. So I remember when I did have a corporate job, I always thought, okay, without this job, I won't be able to make a living. That is a limiting belief. People make a living do up doing a bunch of stuff, from making baby toys to making books, YouTube videos. Um, and that was just a limiting belief that I never paused and examined and asked myself, is that true? Okay, what evidence do I have that makes this true? Um, and most of us, we're not God, we're not um, all knowing. So we have to humble ourselves before we have this limiting belief. Because who's to say that we know all the possibilities in the world to say that this thing is true? So it kind of goes back to any of those like blanket statements that all men are bad or all, all we all need a corporate job to live, okay? So those are another thing that gives you the feedback on if you're doing well in your life, okay? Um, and so I keep saying controlling your mind, but... Um, I'm a woman, and as you, as you can tell, uh, or maybe you can't tell, but um, one of the things when, when the Yoga Sutras does say, work on controlling your mind, to me, as a girl, as a woman, just, my, just living my normal life, that means even controlling my emotions, which was so hard. On my journey through this yoga practice, I had the hardest time controlling my emotion. The minute I felt anger, sadness, anything like that, any negative emotion, I felt that I had to do something. I had to act upon it or express it. So practicing the yoga is to control the mind and emotion. When you feel that heavy 
like strong emotion, it, it's not licensed for you to do whatever you want. It's not, okay? Even though the energy is strong, when you really are practicing your yoga, you stop, you look at the emotion, embody it, let it like overcome you, and then say to yourself, I don't have to do anything about it. I really don't. And if you feel like you do, you want to remove yourself from the emotion so you actually can look at it in a better lens, okay? So that you don't act upon it. Especially any action that is um, acted upon through emotion like that is probably not healthy. Okay, when you can act upon something with a calm, peaceful state and you've let that emotion pass and you feel, still think that that's the right thing to do, then do it. Um, and so one of the ways that you can have some space between the emotion and action is maybe A, you need to go for a hard run, okay? I would go for like four mile run before I would like act upon it, okay? Or you need to journal it out, journal it. Or one of the things I would do was I would call a friend. But now that I'm older, um, I also don't think calling a friend is a good idea because you're basically throwing them your, your problems. Um, I think it's okay to talk about it, but I, I think that all, the answer is always within. And maybe your friend means well, but it, they kind of give like some type of weird advice. So I think the third way of giving yourself space from that emotion is to talk to a professional, okay? Don't talk to someone who is, talk to a professional or a mentor or someone who is actually doing the thing that you want or has gone through the thing that you're struggling with, okay? And they've been, they've been successful. Many times it's easy to ask somebody advice, uh, but they haven't even gone to that level yet. So they're doing the best that they can to give you the best advice, but the, but the, um, the truth of the matter is they haven't hit that level yet or have gone above you. So yeah, so that's, that's how you get feedback on your life if you're doing well in the yoga way, okay, but the man yoga way. Uh, anyways, that's all for today.